Hey folks, this is Max. In this short video, I want to show you how to build your very first Okta workflows flow. And we'll base it on a Hello World example, or we can also call it Hello Workflows. So let's get started. Now I'm in the uh, dashboard or the console, and um, I'm going to click this button uh, to create a new flow. Uh, let's give it a name. So Hello Workflows, and we'll give it a Hello Workflows Flow. Now I'm going to click this button, um, and this is going to help me test the flow later, uh, and also going to show me how data is passed from step to step. So you're going to see that in just a bit. All right. Now, so let me tell you quickly about what we're going to build. So as I said, it's going to be kind of similar to Hello World. What we're going to do is we're going to run this flow um, every five minutes. And then we'll get the current time. We'll um, put together a small message and then send that message to a Slack channel, right? So that's kind of a, um, that's our flow. So the first step uh, or in workflows, it's called the card is um, when to invoke this flow. And so when this happens now, as I said, we're going to use uh, a schedule. Uh, so right here, I'm going to um, add this card now. And you can configure it in many different ways. I am going to use, um, well, it says 15 minutes, but I'm going to change it to five. So this means it's going to uh, run every um, every five minutes. Click save. All right. So the next step is we're going to get the current time. So I'm going to then click add function. Now the difference quickly. So um, app action is usually. Uh, when we're connecting to another service, uh, for example, Slack or Google Sheets. Uh, and then at a function is when we're manipulating the data. Uh, for example, we can manipulate strings, objects, lists. Uh, and in our case, we're getting the current time, which is also a function. So now if we look here, date and time, and then now returns the current date and time. All right, so this is another this is a, the uh, date and time card that returns the current time. Um, now, what's nice is that you can test most cards uh, individually. Um, if you click this button, um, so this card doesn't have any inputs. And then we can just click test. And then right away we see uh, all the data, well, the, the current time in various formats. All right. Now, the next step is to, um, to put together a message. And for that, it's going to be a function as well. And then it's right here in, in the most popular section, compose. Um, and so it allows to basically you know, create uh, a message or, or a string. And I'm going to say, um, for example, hello workflows. We can say this message was printed on now I want to get the time the current time and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, output from the date and time card and then just drag and drop it like this right so this is really really cool and powerful is that it allows you to map data from card uh, to card all right now we can test this card as well now we don't have to get the actual time. We can just say something like uh, Thursday, October uh, 28th, for example, click test. And then this is the message that we get. Now, of course, when we run the actual flow, we'll get the, actual, the time, um, not just a month um, and, and, and day. All right. Now, the next step is to um, send this message to a Slack channel. And so in this case, I'm going to add an app action. And you can see there are many different um, connectors um, to various services that I can use. Now, the one I'm going to use is Slack. And then if I scroll down, there is one that says send message to your channel. All right. Now, I already have a connection to a Slack. So you do need to connect to Slack. So this is similar to like, doing the login with you know, Google or, or, or Facebook or, or similar. You have to authorize that connection. So that's what I did. Um, and I'm going to use the existing connection. Now I'm going to select 
the channel that I want to use is the workflow test one. And then I'm going to keep the message in plain text and click save and save again. Now I want to take the string and pass it to this send the message channel card. So I'm going to take this output and then map it to the input for this card. All right. Um, and that's it. So at this point, um, this is our flow. We can click save. And now we can test this card. I'm sorry, test the flow. All right. And so we can see now we switch to this test mode um, uh, or uh, flow history tab. And we can see how data is passed from card to card. So this is our um, this is our now card. Um, and then the time is mapped to compose. And then, then this mapped to Slack. All right. So that's why I checked that checkbox at the beginning when I was creating uh, creating the, the flow. Now, if you notice actually, so this one here, 349, this was the test run. And then right here, uh, it's the next run. So that's based on the schedule because we turn on, it was turned on when we test it, this, the actual flow was turned on. And so it ran again. Now let's go into um, Slack and we can see here that this first message, this is from our test. And then this message was actually from the flow being scheduled, right? And so right, right here, uh, we can turn it off if you want, but this shows you um, when the flow will uh, will run again, right? And then the next run will uh, will be shown here. And then again, you can click on it and kind of see the data. So this is extremely powerful uh, where you can see how data is passed uh, from card to card during the execution. All right, but um, that's it for, for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you soon.